This is the second mini lecture on chapter one of the e-learning book. And in it, we will address the learning objective, evaluate research evidence on media comparisons. Historically, there have been a lot of efforts to test whether certain kinds of media, um, like early film studies, might improve upon education as it's delivered face-to-face -face in the classroom. Uh, this image shows a computer versus classroom comparison, but there have been TV versus classroom comparisons, many different comparisons of this type. For example, one very early media comparison study was done and reported on in 1947 was the U.S. Army uh, looked at content on how to read a micrometer, and they delivered it in three different ways, by a, a video or film uh, with a text materials or through a lecture. And we can then ask, in which case did students learn more? Well, what they found is that there was no difference. And typical result in this regard is if the content is exactly the same, essentially the words delivered in video, in text, and in the lecture are the same, they're all passive forms of instruction, as it were, where a student isn't involved in interaction. That's another method that's in common. There are likely to be no differences. More generally, there have been what are called meta-analyses that summarize studies like the ones, like the one I just showed you, to see what effect uh, the media might have had on performance. So this was distance learning or e-learning compared to face-to-face -face instruction. So uh, 318 different studies were compared here. And what the effect size indicates is how big the difference is. It's in standard deviation terms between the mean of those in distance learning uh, on a post-test versus the mean post-test performance of those in face-to-face. -face. And you can see there's a lot of variation here, but the key point is that most of the studies show no difference and the others may be showing differences for real or random reasons. Now, certainly different media technologies have different advantages and different disadvantages. And as a consequence, it may make it easier to implement different kinds of instruction or harder. So in podcasts, which are just audio, you can't implement the multimedia principles we'll be talking about, which involve visualizations. Or with intelligent tutors, there's a positive affordance that you can scale the kind of immediate feedback that a tutor can provide or the adjustment of tasks to uh, a student's particular progress as they're working through some curriculum. Those kinds of adjustments that a one-on-one -on -one tutor can provide are hard to scale, but they can be scaled with technology. And then you could ask, does a tutor-facilitated classroom yield better performance than a, a teacher-only uh, facilitated classroom? So adding the tutor to the classroom does that improve? And those kinds of contrasts have sometimes shown big effects and positive effects for the technology. But in that case, the method is changing as well as the technology. So the key for this is to note that the media itself isn't what is usually causing differences if they occur. It's the principles or the techniques that are used and the technology might make it easier in some cases to implement particular techniques.